any real knowledge of the self is inseparable from impenetrable nature of reality in terms of how we would like to penetrate it through reason, logic, understanding. And that is the very closed in circle. On one hand, this is where we ought to enter. Enter that space which has no point of access. And because of the lack of the point of access, we somehow assume that the best is that what will be understood by the mind. And of course, whenever I say that, I should immediately add that uh, that's how the teaching is delivered anyway. The teaching is delivered as that paste crushed down, maybe something added to it. Hmm? Maybe something added to it, maybe some kind of, uh, something need to be liquid, also make it, you know, how the baby food, it, it needs to be soft and palatable and also sweet as well. You know, it has to be sweet, otherwise it will be very unpleasant taste in the mouth, you know, and the baby will spit it out. So therefore, I've tried it myself very often to a pleasant surprise. Then all these kind of uh, supplements and for as a baby food to my mother's breast milk are very pleasant. It's very, you know, nothing to argue about. And that's the analogy to all spiritual teachings, all of it. As ourselves not excluding. We have to go down. We always have to go down to make it accessible. We always have to go down, make it accessible. And of course, there comes times and necessity to go into another gear or another register, another point of entrance. Always remembering that one and the only point of reference, or the point of entrance, I meant, here is always an act of initiation. There is nothing, nothing can be acquired here, nothing can be understood here, unless it is accompanied by a proper initiation. And this is why you would understand why we give attention to that, and why, in especially in the earlier phases, in the earlier immediate years of going public, I had to conduct series of initiations and this is why some of you carry spiritual names. Because it intensifies that point of entrance. It creates the greater funneling into this possibility where the impenetrable space, which is completely sealed and not accessible, can be given access or where access could be granted. So, Always good to bear that in mind. And what brings the um, fruition to the teaching is how that what here acts as that initiation, as that transmission and that descent of grace act upon your own capacity to metabolize and embody this gradually with the fullness of your being how it can have happen. And, of course, this is where we can um, give to a specific, uh, you know, series of discourses on what stands on the way, but you already, I'm sure, all of you by now know what stands on the way. What stands on the way is that uh, a rich layered cake of all these psychic impressions, and what makes it more difficult, as I have uh, made several attempts to remind that if we are to speak of personal tendencies and psychic impressions on so-called individualized level, then that's a, just a piece of cake. <laughs> that's all. That's, pun is not intended. It's just that rich layer and it's a piece of cake. But it contains much denser layers and these denser layers are comprised of collectively shared consensus, collectively shared psychic impressions. And the, I don't want to sound kind of, uh, I don't want to completely 
disregard what many spiritual teachers say today that enlightenment is a simple thing, enlightenment is for everyone, it's all there is. To a degree that is true, but in full measure of what it represents, it's a wishful thinking for most of us who will not have the capacity to make that final or cross that final frontier. And the final frontier here is precisely to go into your own sovereignty in full measure of what it represents. And that in itself is inseparable from leaving behind the very individual who thinks for himself, herself, and thinks that this all happens uh, due to this somehow uh, self-effort, somehow this um, understanding what's going on and you know being in the driving seat, being in charge of the situation, in charge of this whole thing. But what happens instead is very, it's a totally different thing. So this is that, what, why it is spoken of hermeneutically, why that it's spoken of in terms of that impregnable, impenetrable space is because it has this quicksilver-like relationship. To leave behind the individual is impossible because individual itself is a conglomerate of culture. Individual doesn't exist there as, oh, because you have folks, because you had parents, because you kind of read this book and that book. These are only brush strokes, maybe even final brush strokes, but the foundational grounds of who you are as an individual are all secured and fastened by culture, nothing else. So this is why <laughs> pirates here is just not just tongue in cheek. Pirate here, you know, and sailing under your own flag is not just kind of a borrowed metaphor watching too many Jack Sparrow's movies and kind of Pirates of the Caribbean. It served as a joke until it no longer became a joke, until I actually said, well, I'm sorry, if you haven't watched this film, you cannot come to the immersion. <laughs> right? Remember that? And so, you know, like uh, uh, prerequisites, right? Samadhi course, whatever. No, what Samadhi course? We can do Samadhi together. You have to watch all the series of Pirates of the Caribbean to understand the full scope of this teaching, to understand how far reaching it goes. You know, what it means to sail flying Dutchman in 